Hi, welcome back. I'm Teacher Paul. You've joined a series on prayer and fasting, and I'm glad you're here. Hey, welcome to Vietnam. Welcome to our studio. And uh, today we're starting a certain section of our study. We we looked at prayer and fasting from a, from a health perspective, from a physical pers perspective. But for most of us, when we engage in prayer and with fasting, when we get serious about our prayer, and we show God that we humble ourselves, it's usually for a spiritual reason. We, we need a insight or we need breakthrough. We need, we need to hear from God. And uh, we're beginning that section today. Just, uh, just real quick for review, we covered already the introduction. We said fasting is not some new fad. It's been around for a long time. And, uh, but unfortunately, I feel we've kind of put it away. We don't practice it. Uh, it's not very comfortable. It's, not, it's the opposite of today's church, you know. And fasting, is it good for your health? Is it good for you physically? Well, yeah, it is. It's, it's perhaps the best thing you can do. Well, just be careful. Maybe you want to check with your doctor and so on. Go start slowly. And it, again, now we're, uh, we're looking at spiritual breakthrough. For most of us, that's why we do it. That's, we, we have an emergency or we have a problem and we need to get a hold of God. There's four, four men that we're going to look at in the Bible. But before we go to those men, we have to do an honorable mention to one lady, Hannah. Hannah was Samuel's mother. If you have a Bible, let's start there. It's always a good place to start. 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1. Hannah, she has no, she has no child. She's barren. Her womb is barren. And she's mocked. She's, they, oh, she's, it's a terrible life for her because she has no, does not produce an heir to the throne, if you will. In verse 7, I'm in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 7. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, she provoked her, her, her adversary. So, therefore, she wept, speaking of Hannah, she wept and did not eat. Then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Why, why weepest thou? Why, what are you crying for? What's going on? And why eatest thou not? And uh, Hannah, Hannah was, had a private prayer, if you will. Why is thy heart grieved? Am I not I better to thee than ten sons? And uh, verse ten, she was in bitterness of soul. When you when you have bitterness of soul, when you're oppressed, when you just feel so low, uh, you should try. Don't eat. Don't don't comfort yourself with food. Comfort yourself with prayer and fasting. <laughs> it's the best. That'll, get, that'll help you. And uh, you know the rest of the story. She, God heard her prayer. The priest thought she was drunk. He, that would be Eli. But no, she's not drunk. She's just talking, using her silent prayer, if you will. And uh, he, he grants her her prayer. He goes, yeah, okay, go your way. She went home and she ate. And she was happy. She was sad no more. Next thing you know is she has a baby. And you know the story of Samuel, great prophet, great judge of, of Israel. This is just before the time of the king. So uh, she, Hannah is worth mentioning. But really the, the, the main character in this episode is someone who is perhaps most famous for his prophetic statements, having visions, having insight. And that would be Daniel. We're going to look at Daniel, Saul, who would become Paul. 
We're going to look at Peter and we're going to look at Cornelius because they all have some, these men have something in common. What do they have in common? Let me ask you, what, what does Daniel, Saul, Peter, and Cornelius have in common? Well, number one, obviously they're biblical characters. But number two, their prayer was answered. They were given insight. And they, it was a breakthrough by visions. They all had visions. And number three, and this is to the point, fasting was part of their praying. I've gone to two Bible schools and I've been studying the Bible for years and years. And very rarely do we touch on this topic of fasting and yet it's very biblical and it's very powerful. But anyway, we're going to look at Daniel. Yeah, I couldn't help but, you know, uh, maybe, maybe it's time to buy a new car. And uh, just little stories to help you understand. You know, when, when you're looking at a new car and maybe you sort of have a certain model you're interested in, you know, when you look around, wow, there's, a, there's one there and there's another one, there's another one, there's an, they're all over the place. But you never saw them before because you didn't really look for them. So it is with prayer and fasting. Well, wow, they're, they're everywhere. But we've never really noticed it. We've never really paid attention until it pertains to us. So, uh, hey, buckle up, enjoy. Here we go. Here's, here's Daniel. Daniel is famous for the Daniel... Well, he's famous for a lot of things in the lion's den. That would be chapter 6. But we're not going to talk about the lion's den. Even before that, when he was a young man, he's a captive, probably a eunuch, maybe. I, that was the thing they did back then. There's no Mrs. Daniel or family mentioned. But, uh, wow, the famous Daniel fast of chapter 1. And that's becoming popular even out in the world. They use the Daniel fast, where no, no sweet, none of the king's dainties. But we're going to look into his life a little later. Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9 is perhaps the most famous prophetic chapter of the Bible. It speaks of Daniel's, maybe this is too deep, I'm sorry, but you over here, Daniel's 70 weeks, and it's the timeline of the last days and what's, what's going to happen in Israel. But uh, I'm in Daniel chapter 9. Da again, Daniel's a servant to the king. He's a captive, and, uh, but he's, he's well esteemed. He's, he's high in position. In verse 3, Daniel wrote, I set, And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and he made confession and so on. Daniel had always, his whole life, made fasting uh, part of his prayer life and it shows up again in his later life. So you know uh, Daniel really really is sincere about his prayer and God sends Gabriel an angel in verse 21 and uh, he gives him this prophetic, he gives him this insight and now later in his life in Daniel chapter 10 this is a, another regime change, if you will. And Daniel's still a servant there. He's still like high in the chain. Uh, so trusted, such a good man. In Daniel chapter 10, let me get over there. It's, this is under Cyrus, king of Persia. He says in verse 3, I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, Neither did I anoint myself at all till three weeks, three whole weeks were fulfilled. I, I don't know if he was a complete absolute fast, but he, nothing, there certainly was no sugar and nothing sweet. He may have had something because he's on duty, but very, he was chastening, he was fasting. And uh, he fasted for three weeks. And what happened there? 
after a little while, an angel shows up again. And he says this in Daniel chapter 10, verse 12. This man, he said, we know it would be an angel. Then said he, the angel, unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God. The angel said, I, we, from the very first day you started to pray and chasten yourself. It's funny because David wrote, when I wept and chastened my soul with fasting. Daniel chastened himself with fasting, with what he chose to not eat. Very, very interesting. And God recognized that from the very first day. But it took 21 days, 21 days to break through. The, the, prince, or the angel goes on, he goes, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me. He's talking about spiritual beings, representatives in the spirit world. They're representing the, the physical world, but they're spiritual beings. Prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one in 20 days. And lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, he uses the word princes instead of archangel, came to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia. But Daniel, by his prayer and fasting, his perseverance, he initiated spiritual warfare. And he enabled his spiritual representative, I mean, here on earth, by what we do, we can affect what happens in the spiritual realm. Here's one man, his passion to get an answer, a passion for spiritual insight, drove all of this action in the spirit realm. Really interesting. Prayer and fasting was part of that, very much so. It appears that no matter what, no matter where you are, know this. This is a, we're coming to the end. Know this. No matter who you are, no matter where you are, God will recognize the gravity of your prayer when you include denying yourself. We chasten ourselves, we deny ourselves by fasting, as Daniel did. Really interesting. Power through prayer, yeah. Include fasting in it. You want spiritual breakthrough, you want insight, include fasting. So here's your assignment. <laughs> here's another assignment. I want you to consider, consider a 24-hour fast. You can do it. We've seen already, you fast already. You can go 24 hours. You can do it. You, you'll live. You'll be fine. And see what, see what, have something to pray about. Have something in your heart. See if God doesn't recognize your prayer with fasting. All right? Hey, this is exciting. This is good biblical counsel. And speaking of biblical counsel, thinking about good things, here's our sponsor. I hope you enjoy your prayer and fasting. I don't know if we enjoy fasting, but we enjoy contact and we enjoy the spiritual breakthrough. It's good. God bless you. Have a great week. We'll see you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.